Listen carefully now. You'll find it difficult to make out the words here, but a century ago, this was a voice that set Wales alight. <laughs> Well, that was a recording, the only recording of the voice of the leader of the 1904-05 revival, religious revival in Wales, Evan Roberts, and that was recorded in 1905. The 26-year-old miner and the blacksmith from Lacha was the central figure of the revival when pubs, theatres, playing fields were shunned, and we all turned to the chapels. Uh, the recording has been described as one of the most important finds in the history of the National Screen and Sound Archive of Wales at the National Library in Aberystwyth. And David Pritchard is assistant curator of that collection. Good morning, David. Good morning. Um, re uh, remind us of the events of 0405 briefly, because it was a, a, an absolutely extraordinary little period in Welsh history. It was, yes. It, uh, uh, not many of us these days have any real idea what a, what a revival actually uh, feels like, but I would imagine that it, it, it's something that, as it swept through Wales in a fairly short time, was really quite extraordinary. Uh, uh, and it meant huge crowds, and we're talking thousands, tens of thousands of people gathering for religious services um, and, and committing themselves to a religious life. Yes, and also, of course, in smaller groups as well, um, but chapels did fill up, um, and, and there was, for, for at least a period, uh, a very different outlook on, on life in Wales. And the, this recording of Evan Roberts, who led the revival, and not the only leader, but, but the most prominent of, of Adam, how did that come to life? Uh, one, of, one of those um, lucky, piece, uh, lucky things that happen occasionally to archives and national libraries, I suppose. I suppose. Um, and Mr. Barry Davis from Tredegar was uh, kind enough to uh, offer us a collection of six wax cylinders, and amongst these was this particular cylinder, which uh, purported to be the voice of Evan Roberts. Unfortunately, it was broken. It was in about a dozen pieces at the time, so we had to reconstruct the cylinder and hope at the same time, obviously, that it actually was the cylinder which, which held the voice of Evan Roberts and we think it certainly is. And you couldn't sort of do the reconstruction of the library itself. There's not a, a, a sort of expert on wax cylinders there. You had to, uh, to search the world. We did have to search the world. There are some people in Wales and in Britain who do it, but not many people were prepared to take it on this job because it was seen as, as being particularly important. But we, we did find somebody in, in Los Angeles, Dr. Michael Kanchelian, who um, was kind enough and eventually skillful enough to put it back together for us. And uh, we, we hear that voice, but it's difficult to make out the words. We, uh, we get some of the charisma, but what does hearing the voice actually mean? Uh, two things, I think. The first thing about Evan Roberts, partly he was quite a... Uh, he wasn't a Billy, Billy Graham-type figure. Uh, he was a quiet, although charismatic character who would almost very often lead um, congregations in a silent way. And, uh, in, in fact, um, prod the congregations themselves to take part rather than him being the, the central figure. Um, but I think hearing the voice does, does, does give you an idea of, 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 the, of the feeling and of the, of the, of the mood of, of, of that particular time. The sad thing is that um, you know, Evan Roberts lived for a long time after that revival. He yeah. supposedly had some sort of breakdown that no one went back to him in later years because you know, he lived into an age where proper recordings, proper interviews could have been recorded. Yes, that's true. I think he lived until 1951. Um, that's true. But the, the difference with this particular recording, of course, is that it, is that it came from the period, the most important period in his life, the, the, the actual revival. Uh, about the quality, I think, the one thing that has to be said is that this hopefully isn't the end of the story. Now that we have a digital recording, and although attempts have been made to, to improve the quality of the sound, um, the technolo technological um, advances may still take place, and we might still be able to improve it in the future. Let's hope so. It's a fascinating little piece of Welsh history. David, thank you very much. David, who's the assistant curator of the National Screen and Sound Archive. <laughs>